Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And today we've got the infotainment breakdown, the 2024 Audi A4. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how the 10.1 inch MMI center touch screen works. We're gonna look at the virtual cockpit in front of us, show you how to pair up a phone, use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, a subjective opinion on the system at the end. And before we get started, let's hop out and take a particularly quick look at the car because the Santa Ana winds are blowing here in Orange County today and it's very windy. <laughs> but this, to the keen eyed observer, is actually an Audi S4. So coming in with that more potent V6 turbocharged engine. Pretty fun to drive around so far this week. So if you do want to see more on the car, check the link below. We've got a dedicated breakdown of the Bang & Olufsen 3D audio system, full drive review, fuel economy testing, all that will be linked below. Starting off right in front of us, in the windshield actually, we have a nice subtle head-up display. Currently it's just showing me the speed in digital readout, but if we bury ourselves into the settings here, I bet you we could get a little bit more to come up on it. So you actually adjust the settings for the head-up display over here in the center touch screen. If we go to display contents, we can choose to see the navigation. If we got nav going, we can see traffic signs. So if we were driving along, we'd see a stop sign or a speed limit sign come up. Efficiency assist, so it'll tell me when it recommends letting off the accelerator pedal. And driver assistance, maybe if we have uh, some sort of emergency type of situation, it'll pop up there. So really not as many things in there as you could get with a lot of other cars, but I'm actually okay with it. I like how it's just a nice subtle number right up there telling me my speed. And then up here in front of us, we have the Audi Virtual Cockpit. It's a big digital screen right in front, taking over as a gauge cluster. And we've got a lot of information. Up on the very top, we have our headlight status and any sort of engine warning lights because the car is off right now. We've got a check engine light. Below that, you have a page title for which page within the screen you're in. So if I use these buttons on the left side of the steering wheel, I can cycle through the different menus. We'll get more to that in a moment. On this main menu we're in, on the left side is a scrollable information screen, so it can tell me everything from my fuel level, fuel economy, short-term and long-term memory for trip data, what's using my energy, the driver state estimation, how fatigued I am, any sort of driver assistance features that are being utilized, and traffic signs. Down in the bottom left, we've got engine coolant, I know it's oil temperature actually, and then bottom center, we've got a clock, odometer, tripometer, and outside temperature. Over on the bottom right, we have the boost gauge for the turbo. And then on the side, on the right, we've got the date and time. And right in the center, a tachometer with my digital speed, gear, and drive mode selection. However, if I choose this view button down here on the steering wheel, it entirely changes things up. And now I see tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right, and driver information in the middle. And then it kind of goes back. And then, using these top buttons again, we can cycle through the various center menus, or Oh, well, I was confused there for a minute. Or left menus, depending on which sort of orientation and view you have here. You've got audio information, press right one more time. You've got phone information, and then press right again, we've got navigation. Now on this screen, if I press view, then I get the navigation taking up nearly the entire screen. And I quite like that. I like to drive around, have my satellite navigation going right in front of me. In any of these information screens on the left side of the screen, if you press this, icon on the left side of the scroller knob on the left side of the wheel, you got more information that you can change. You can change to more of a reduced display, you can adjust settings for your trip computer, or say for example if you have the navigation up, bring it full screen here, we can press that and then get uh, maybe last destinations, your favorite destinations, a lot of uh, playing around you should do. And I, in fact, I should have mentioned that there at the beginning. If you own one of these cars, I highly recommend spend an hour or so playing around in your driveway or parking lot or something, getting familiar with the system because there really is a lot of functionality that I'm not even going to get into in this video because say you use the built-in navigation a lot, you might want to really play around and see how you can customize your map and really get it to your best use case. Making our way over to the center screen. It might not be the largest screen on the market, but it is nicely functional and provides uh, good responsiveness, and overall I don't mind the system. Over on the top here, we've got an, an information bar that you can pull down and see any notifications for your vehicle. You can also get to quick toggles such as turning the display off or opening your garage door, or maybe muting the music, getting to your sound settings, etc. You also have your clock on the top right, and if you pull it down, you get the date, and you can press that if you wanna change your date and time settings, although usually it's just set automatically. 
this is what your home screen is going to look like and you can change these applications around, I believe. Yep, please select a tile to edit its content. So you can edit which information is viewed in these different tiles, or you can change the layout as well. Some people are gonna want different setups. So if your screen looks a little different, that might be why, because it's been customized and you can customize it to put the applications that you use most frequently there. Likewise, this bar on the left side of the screen has five apps that you set as uh, kind of the ones you wanna use most frequently. So right now we've got home, radio, cloud media, phone and navigation but I don't use cloud media very much, so I'm gonna scroll over here and get normal media, drag and hold that over to the side and swap that out. So now I have normal media, or say for example, I also use Android Auto much more than the normal navigation or normal phone. So I'm gonna swap that out there, and now it's easier to get to my phone projection. So let's go through your most important functionality on the various applications, starting off with radio. Here's how your radio screen's gonna look. You can scroll through the channels, and then once you pick one, let's go Pearl Jam, and you got your now playing right there, you can play, pause, back up, et cetera. Going back home and then to the media screen. This is where you get to your various media settings. We've got the USB stick that we we're using to test the 5.1 capability earlier, but you could also get to something like your Bluetooth streaming or streaming services connected to the car, some of those internet streaming services. On the phone screen, this is how you're going to use your phone if you only have it connected via Bluetooth and you don't have any sort of phone projection being used. You can search for contacts, you can dial a phone number, just like that. Can you see text messages? Does not look like we have text messages from that screen. Continuing on to navigation, you see the similar nav screen up here that we do in the center gauge cluster. It's got satellite projection right now, but I believe you can turn that off under map settings. Yep, satellite map. Turn that off and then you just get a little bit more of a grayscale setup. But Audi seems to really like having their satellite. So we're gonna have that on. You can adjust the different colors. You can adjust if you want to see traffic in indicated on the map. A lot of different settings. You can change how the map is set up. I highly recommend you go through. And again, if you plan on using the built-in navigation, go through the various settings, see what's gonna work best for you. But you can do pinch and zoom. It's decently responsive, maybe a little bit more delay than some other systems, but definitely not the worst on the market. Coming back home, we're going to skip over Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for a little while. Skip, uh, let's go into vehicle though. Under vehicle, we have a setting for Audi Drive Select. This is how you're going to change your drive modes. You can also quickly change them with buttons down here below the climate control, but you can go in and customize your individual drive mode as well. Coming on back, efficiency assist. This will turn on or off various economy tips if you want to be reminded of ways that you can save fuel economy or say fuel rather, while you're driving. Under seats, we actually have massage built into this prestige model. So you can turn that on or off from that screen. Under light and visibility, you can change some settings for the exterior lights, such as do you want your automatic headlamps on or off? Do you want daytime running lamps on or off? Interior lighting, we have some ambient lighting adjustment here in the car, so we can choose the different colors. You can even individually select pretty much, let's see, yep. Just uh, up to 30 different colors is what Audi gives you. Fairly comprehensive. You can also adjust the brightness of that ambient lighting. And then rain sensor. Do you want your headlights to come on when it starts raining? I highly recommend that. Some settings for the parking aid. Do you want the beepers to automatically come on and uh, the camera to come on as you're coming up to park near something? Rear cross traffic alert. That's also a nice feature to have. Driver assistance, a little bit more comprehensive screen if you don't want to be warned if you're speeding, if you don't want to be um, warned if you're following too closely. A lot of these safety sort of settings which really are helping you be a safer driver, but if they annoy you, you can turn those off in there. You can also adjust some settings for the adaptive cruise control. Under settings and service, you're pretty much just gonna see some information for service intervals. You can uh, reset that if you do your own oil changes, for example. Integrated toll module, this would be nice if you drive a lot of toll roads, you can get an integrated toll module for the car. A few other settings, garage door opener settings in there, oil level, also how you're gonna adjust your tire pressure monitoring. And you can also put the windshield wipers up into a change position right there in order to swap out your blades. Mm. Coming back home, there is a store screen if you're connected with one of your uh, My Audi accounts, which you can use for purchasing things and uh, syncing up settings to your car. That's how you're gonna access that. 
Under themes, you can choose different themes for the system, changing the color around and making it look a little bit different, but you gotta use your phone for that. You got Amazon Alexa built into the car, so if you wanna be able to talk to her and give Amazon more money, that's where you're gonna do that. Let's dive on to, into settings real quick, mostly because I wanna turn off the screen click sound. That's probably gonna be under general, maybe? No, nope, not under general, although that is how you adjust your date and time and your measurement units for different regions. Display, MMI, touchscreen feedback. I'm gonna turn that off. There we go, now I can tap the screen without constantly clicking at you. But you can also adjust the volume of that touchscreen feedback depending on if you like it or not. Heading back to the main display screen here, you can adjust some settings for the head-up display, which we saw earlier. Also for the virtual cockpit, I guess I should have showed this earlier, but we can choose some different uh, screen layouts. So if we change that to the sport screen, then we see some bigger center gauges right there, kind of emulating analog tachometer and speedometer gauges, or the dynamic screen, which is looking less conventional than the other two. Yeah, and play around with those, you can really get the car looking exactly how you want it to. And then under MMI settings, you can adjust the brightness of the screen, and you can also put it into screen cleaning mode, which will kind of lock the screen out, and you're probably gonna need to use that pretty regularly because it's easy to get fingerprints on this display. Language and keyboard, what are the different languages we have in this one? Just English, Spanish, and French. Again, interesting for no German. Hmm. Under sound, that's how you're going to do your various sound settings for your Bang & Olufsen sound system or whatever sound system you have in your A4 or S4. If you need to do a software update, you're going to find that under System Maintenance. If you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, you might be able to pull a software update. Under Users, you can set up uh, different My Audi user accounts and synchronize your settings to your car. Connected Devices, if you need to connect or disconnect various Bluetooth or Wi-Fi devices, that's how you're going to do that there. Under Connection Settings, you can connect to the vehicle's Wi-Fi hotspot, so the vehicle actually provides a data connection if you pay for it monthly in order to connect various tablets or Wi-Fi enabled devices. Some settings for entertainment, you could enable or disable HD radio. And that's it for your important settings. There are little individual settings for the telephone and for texting, etc. And if you do use that functionality, I recommend you go in and play around with them, but they're not what I consider to be uh, highly important and, and useful settings. Further on under the app screen, we do see the ability to go under messages. So if you wanted to do text messaging with your phone, you'd do that through there. And then Audi provides you a news and a weather app as well. So you can go in here and get live weather readouts and some news uh, headlines as well. If it's better to do that from your car screen than with your touch screen or simply just get home and read a newspaper. It does take a little while for the weather to load up, but there you see we've got our weather forecast and we can even see a radar. That is something nice to be able to have right in front of you on your screen. Okay, let's dive into the voice commands now. So if we press this button on the steering wheel, navigate to the nearest Starbucks. Wait one moment while I find destinations for you. You can now choose a line number or provide additional search terms. One. Should I start route guidance now? Yes. I have started route guidance. All right, so a little bit more rudimentary than some of the other voice control systems we've seen, but it does seem competent. Some of the systems, I'd be able to just press it and say navigate to that location and it would simply go. Cancel navigation. Okay, I am canceling route guidance. What's the weather like tomorrow? Tomorrow it will be between 48 and 66 degrees Fahrenheit in Lake Forest. It is possible that's, that it will rain okay. lightly. I suppose that's helpful. Set the climate control to 62 degrees. Please wait one moment while I find destinations for you. Oof. That was not you can now choose close a at all. <clears throat> Let's try that again. Set the climate to 62 degrees. Please say a search term. Set the temperature to 62 degrees. Pardon? 
All right, so it doesn't really seem like it's able to do uh, HVAC, which is a little disappointing. How about how about one of these? Play Sirius XM channel 42. Okay, sound 42. Okay, so we got that going at least. Right? Is that the right one I got? Yep, sound 42. Okay, I guess the tracks have changed a little bit, or stations. Okay, how about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto? I'll show you how to pair up a phone here in a moment, but I've already got Android Auto connected, so let's take a look. There we go, taking up most of the screen, but still giving you your persistent menu on the left and top. Let's go home screen, we're seeing Amazon Music taking up a little bit on the right, and then our Google Maps taking up the larger two-thirds section on the left. If we click Google Maps, we get the full screen. We can move around, pinch and zoom. I do like the feel of the glass on this Audi screen. Okay, let's take a look at Amazon Music there. Let's go over to YouTube Music, that's what we usually use. I'm listening to Amazon Music for that higher fidelity. Resolution's not fantastic here with Apple or with Android Auto, but uh, let's hit the Super Mix, see what we're getting. Pillow Fight by Young Gravy. All right, so phone's feeling some gravy for this car. Let's show you now how to pair up an iPhone. So we're going to go back to the home screen. I'm going to get out my trusty iPhone SE, and we're going to bring the iPhone over to the settings screen and then click Bluetooth. And then in the car, I'm going to go to slide over to settings and then connected devices, top right, connected devices. I'm going to scroll down to smartphone interface, click that, and hit new connection. That's oh, actually unavailable. I'm going to have to disconnect my old phone. So I click on that, and then I'm able to hit new connection. Now it's searching for a device. And I see Charlie's iPhone pop up, so I'm going to select that. On the phone, I'm going to get a pop up, and I'm going to have to click pair. And then I'm asked if I want to use CarPlay on the phone. I choose use CarPlay, and on the car, I say yes, continue for Apple CarPlay. And there we have it, Apple CarPlay coming up. Looks like a better resolution than we were seeing with Android Auto. Looking nice on there. Got the split screen setup going. Let's go into Google Maps. We have our drag but no pinch and zoom so we got to zoom the old-fashioned way by clicking oh but yeah really responsive really good refresh rate as well let's go to our YouTube music once that loads up let's see what we're getting on the super mix from the iPhone the lane okay and then you can see when you're back home again you got the split screen setup and with either Apple CarPlay and or Android Auto you can just press home and be right back to the home screen of your MMI system Okay, I think that's everything. I don't think I'm forgetting anything important here. My thoughts on the 10-inch screen here in the Audi A4. I don't love the way it's just kind of plastered onto the dash there, but I do appreciate that they kept the center layout with all the physical climate control adjustments and physical audio and track selection. I mean, it really is an easy system to use day to day. Really, most people just get in, they connect their phone to the screen, and they just kind of rely on CarPlay or Android Auto, and for that, it works really well. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the A4 slash S4, check the link below, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.